<laughs> Man. Gosh. <laughs> well, I say what I said in the first service. I missed you too. I missed you very much. I missed you more than you think, man. It was such a, it got me a little emotional. That still got me emotional there. I didn't expect that. Uh, but it's so good to be with all of you here. It's great to be here. Uh, I actually, we actually kind of came in last Sunday incognito, worship with you all. It was so good to be back uh, with all of you worshiping. You know how much my heart goes towards that with worshiping with all of you. There's just nothing like being here, uh, worship with my people, man. So it was just awesome to be here. Happy Labor Day weekend. Uh, welcome to week number one of our five-part series that we're calling Ella elephant in the room. We're going to get to that uh, here in one minute, but I just want to take a second like I always have and just address those of you watching live, watching online. Thank you for joining us. We're so glad that you're watching wherever you are. And listen, if you can come and and see us and hang out with us and worship with us, we would love to have you because this is a great place to be. Amen, everybody. Come on. This is a great place to be. God is meeting us here and we want you to be with us, man. This is a, it's just an open invitation to come on and, and visit us and I'll say hello. So will we. So uh, now if you don't know me or if you don't remember me, if you just kind of uh, just started hanging out this summer and, uh, you know, I, I don't always get applause. I've been gone uh, over the summer. I wish I did. That'd be great. Um, but uh, I'm glad to say it. My name's Andy. I'm just, I'm one of the pastors here and uh, I was able, because of all of you uh, let me do this, to take uh, the summer off. I, I took a planned break there just to kind of get rested uh, and just kind of take over the last 10 years of ministry that I've been doing, just take, uh, just peel back a little bit from those last 10 years and get some spiritual refreshment and uh, get some focus time on, on just getting ready for the next season. And, and God willing, another 10 years, 10 plus years here uh, with all of you and what God's doing. And, and overall, the summer, was, it was great. Like I had just a great summer. Uh, man, I, I just was able to uh, just be with God for a little bit and just have some time with him. And I, believe it or not, learned some new things about myself. I got new things to learn about myself, everybody. Uh, did that and uh, man, and I was a God, man, he just took me back to the basics and he showed me so many uh, great things through the time in the word. I read some really, really good books, three or four really good books uh, just to get me ready for the next season here. And, uh, and I also had some great time with my family. I uh, had a good time to be able to just uh, hang out with them and goof off with them, honestly. We just had an awesome time. Traveled a lot, uh, as much as we could, more than we ever could. Uh, so we went to the beach. We actually took a really great trip out west and uh, just had an awesome time. And I tried to just give you guys a taste of that, give a picture of like sort of something that captures uh, how much fun I have with my family. There, there it is. That's not the right, that's not the right picture. Um, there it is, that's the right picture. Uh, but for me, uh, <laughs> Courtney took the picture, but that like, that captures it, man. Like Roxy right there, just that's how much fun I think we had this summer. And Henry, uh, he learned the photo bomb, everybody. So we got about... Uh, 50 more of those. It was really hard to get him to actually take a serious picture. It was actually kind of frustrating. Uh, but we had a great, great summer. It was really, really fun. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you uh, for my family and myself for letting me do that. Uh, now I'm just ready to get moving, guys. I'm ready to see what God has in store. I think he's going to show up. He's going to do some great things this fall and what we're going to be seeing happening. I'm just ready. Are you guys ready to see God do some awesome things? I am too, man. I'm ready. I'm ready to do it, man. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Uh, so if you want to, go ahead and pull out your sermon notes there. Uh, pull those out. Get those ready. One of the things you're going to notice real quick before we get to it uh, is a couple things we, we've decided to do. What you're going to notice, one, is that we have our sermon outline, and then on the back, uh, we put our discussion guide on there. Uh, we want to put those together so you have the uh, both of those in the same place. So if you're in a group, that's just, you can take that thing with you. And, and even if you're not in a group, it's just a great thing to have and maybe discuss during the week with other folks and all that stuff. And then you're also going to notice that it's three-hole punched, uh, and we did that for a reason. We did that on purpose. Uh, so what we want to do starting today we have out there in the lobby there's not a, a, too many of them left we're going to restock them next Sunday uh, we actually have binders provided for every single one of you that wants one uh, so next week it'll be, and we had a little bit left out there this morning we ran out pretty quick uh, but man we just we want that to be a place where we just want to be we want to elevate the vision uh, of not just taking notes and throwing them away or putting them in the car or something like that but to have a place to hold on to them uh, so that you can look back not only just over the series that we've done but over the year and say man God's really taught me a lot and and to, to be able to take them to group together. We just want to make that a little bit easier for all of you to do that. And uh, so I just hope you take advantage of that. They're free. You bought them. Go get them. We're going to restock them next week if you missed out on that uh, this week. So uh, go ahead and grab one of those. And, and I'm going to tell you, like, I'm looking forward. I'm, I, you know, we got to get settled on this. I'm looking forward to hearing the clicking uh, every Sunday uh, after I pray, everybody. Um, so wait till I pray and then you can click away. But here's the thing, like, I, I hope we look forward to that too because here's what I, here's what, uh, I feel when I, when 
when I, when I hear those clicks, man, it just means you're taking those notes and you're taking it seriously. So I, I'm just excited about that and, and, and knowing that God can use that stuff beyond Sunday. So take advantage of that, get that, and if you miss it out on this week, we'll have more for you next Sunday. All right, so if you were here over Easter, on Easter Sunday, which was like the couple thousand folks were here just at this campus alone. What we did on Easter Sunday was we told you that we were gonna get ready for a series coming in the fall called The Elephant in the Room. And what we wanted you to do, we gave you all cards to fill out and we wanted to know what you wanted to know. We wanted you to help us set the topics uh, for this series. We wanted to know, what did you wanna know what God has to say about this or, or what God has to say about that? Questions that you have. And so you all did that. You responded uh, in a big way. We had hundreds and hundreds, actually over a thousand responses just in this campus Charleston campus did that as well so we had so many responses and what we did was we took those collected them and we sort of sorted them out and we put them into all kinds of topics I think we came out with like 15 to 20 major topics and we settled on five of the most notable categories that we're going to try and handle in this next five weeks in this series and we're calling it the elephant in the room uh, because of a reason because we're going to be addressing over the next five weeks starting this Sunday uh, with things that I would say many Christians avoid or many Christians might not want to talk about for a few reasons one is because it's just maybe not so easy to talk about that's why you ask the questions it's just not so easy to talk about uh, and the other is maybe some uh, feel like you're the only one wondering that you're the only one wondering that question you're like well I'm not going to bring that up in front of people because I don't want to be the only one uh, that's thinking of that that's like the elephant in the room so we want to address the elephant in the room so we want to talk about these things uh, over the next month and a week we want to talk about that see what God has to do and you ask them so we're going to talk about those and I also think by the way I just don't think we, we, we can avoid these things. We can't just say, man, I'm not sure and I don't know and that's good enough. No, we've got to go after these things and know how to handle the truth of what God has to say about things. And I also think it's important because not only do we need to know the truth about some of these questions, we also know everybody, we just more now more than ever, how to handle these, how to handle these with folks who may not agree with it that we love. P people who we really, in our circles, that, that may need a little more help to understand it. And so uh, that's another reason why I want to do it. So I hope as we talk through these handful of things that for you as a Jesus follower if you're out there that that can help you understand okay this is how I approach it this is how I go after this is the, you know in my circle of friends this is how it comes up and even some of the things that might come up in your own uh, in your own minds of like how do I handle that so that's one reason but I also think that there are people here and there are people watching people who filled out the cards too uh, and that you that you may have your own doubts uh, about God and you're here or maybe you have reservations about man is this you know living this life of faith and Jesus all that stuff is that real and and maybe you've even been burned by how other Christians have handled certain topics. And so we want to handle it for that reason too. And here's my hope over the next five weeks uh, for you as well. And some of these, by the way, some of these are going to be easier questions. Like this week is going to be, when I ease in, uh, this is a bit easier of a question. We can handle this topic in about 30 minutes. I think we'll be okay with that. Some of these are going to be harder. Some of these, there's no way I'm going to be able to handle it in 30 minutes. It's just, it deserves a lot more time, a lot more thought, but we're still going to go into it. We're still going to talk about that. But as we do this, my hope is that, we, that God should up for you and he can do way more than I ever can and, and my hope is that you could just be open over the next five weeks to what God has to say and let God kind of handle it uh, beyond what I could ever do and even if I did have an hour to talk about some of these things I still wouldn't do justice to what I just want us to be open to what God has to say fair enough fair enough okay well that's what we're gonna do all right so uh, today let's just get to it let's get to the very first question and I'm so glad this is one of the top questions that you all asked and here it is. This is what you wanted to know. How do I find the path God has for me? Now, there were a lot of ways that you guys asked this question, but it kind of boiled down to the same category. Uh, some of you asked, like, you know, how do I find God's will uh, for my life? Some of you asked, like, what is God's will for my life? How do I find my purpose? A lot of you asked, how do I actually find my purpose? Some of you said, how, how, why is it so hard to follow God's will? And I just love that this is one of the bigger questions that, that all of you ask, because here's what I read into th this category of things. See, you're not wondering if there is a path that God has. It's just, how do I get myself on that path, and how do I actually stay uh, on that path uh, because I want to be in the best position to receive it not only for my life but for my family's sake and just for the sake I just I want to be on that so how do I get there and so just so you know just to get started on this if you've ever wondered if you've been here and and you've ever wondered if you live you know uh, just with us and, and you're just ever wondering like is there a purpose is there a plan for your life you know am I here for a reason or does life just go in these circles like for no reason like you know I go to school and, and I get out of school and I 
get a job and then I get another job maybe and maybe I get married and maybe I get a kid and then I get another job and then uh, I got to pay a bunch of bills and then, uh, you know, I retire and then I wear long white socks and die. Is that it? Like, is that, I mean, is there more of that, right? Like, or if you've ever, you know, you think that, like, why do they wear long white socks? I don't know. But if you ever think that, uh, if you're wearing long socks, I'm sorry. Um, but like, you're ever thinking that we love you. And uh, or if you're looking down the road of your life, and you're like, man, all I see is the same stuff happening, but the only thing changes is, is I'm just getting older. Is there more to this? Here's what I'm going to say, everybody. The fact that you're asking that question or the fact that you've ever just wondered that question, thinking about your life that way, why am I here? Is there a plan? I just believe the fact that you wonder that is a signal that the answer is yes, everybody, that there is a bigger plan. There is a bigger purpose for your life. And it's why I think, by the way, you have to believe, you just have to because of that. If you've ever wondered that you have to believe that you were just made different than every other creature that exists on this planet you're just different you're different than every other creature you're made differently everybody because here's the deal okay if you have a dog all right and you stare into your dog's beady little eyes like way deep into it he is not pondering the meaning of life okay like he just I'm not knocking your dog. I love your dog. Don't send me an email about your dog, okay? I know he's really intelligent, okay? I got plenty of emails to respond to right now as it is, but don't, I love your dog, okay? But he's not like examining the meaning of life. He just wants to know if you got bacon, period. That's it. Like he's like, do you have bacon? I don't, I don't care about life. What's it, do you have bacon? I smell bacon. That's all he cares about, okay? So like there, there is something in us, there's something in us that looks and wonders if there's a plan or if there's something to follow to unlock the purpose of our life. It's just we're set apart that way as human beings. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Christianity has always and will always have an answer to that to say yes. Yes, absolutely. That there is a God who made you and he loves you. And he, he really does have a plan and a purpose. He is very interested in you finding the purpose for this life and beyond and living that out. That this thing in you that wonders these kind of things, it's like a beacon pointing to something bigger that God really does have for your life. So here's what I want to tell you right off the bat, everybody. God is speaking and he has a plan for your life. Do you agree with that today? Yeah, I think that's why you asked the question. And what you want to know is like, how do I hear him better? How do I get on that path? How do I know that I'm on the right path? And so we're just going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Here's how we're going to tackle that, okay? We're going to look at just, we're going to start out, if you're taking notes, we're going to start out with a few reasons, a few things that if God really is speaking uh, this path to us all the time, then what are some of the things that get in the way of me hearing him clearly? What are some of the things that, what I'm going to say is knock me off the path? What are some things that do that? And then we're going to talk about a few things that just help us hone in on God's plan and his purpose, put ourselves in the best position to find that and get on the path that he wants, okay? So here we go. We're going to get to it right away. Here's the first major way that we get knocked off this path. It's busyness. Write that down if you're taking notes. It's busyness. Now, Chad addressed this a few weeks ago when we were in our last series talking about like being a good neighbor and loving people well and, and really uh, uh, sharing the, uh, Jesus to, to people that we love. And he said busyness is one of those things that just knocks us out of, of being able to do that well. But busyness is such a distractor for so many great things, isn't it? It really is. And it is absolutely an obstacle of staying on God's clear path for your life, okay? And I, I don't know if you think about it this way, but it, you should think about it this way. Uh, this is a very spiritual issue. This is one of the biggest spiritual issues in your life your ability to create space and say no to things good things to say no to really good things so you'll have margin and that you're not living on the edge and not uh, having a fear of missing out it is a very very spiritual issue it's way more spiritual than you think because here's how i'm going to put it i'll put it this way uh, at one point in time at what point in time uh here's what happens uh there there is something that comes into play in the space between your to-dos and the limit that space in between your to-dos and that limit is absolutely a matter of trusting God. And trusting God and not missing out. And trusting God and saying, I need that space. And trusting God and having those margins. Because believe it or not, believe it or not, trust me on this, God's will, God's plan for you is to not be so overloaded and exhausted in your life where you're just going crazy. Or that you can only give God and other people that you love the scraps. That's not his plan for you. It's definitely not. Check this out, what Psalm 46 says. He says, here's what God says. He says, just be still. Like, what are you doing with the craziness? Like, be still. Stop overloading your stuff. You gotta say no to something. Be still. Why? And know that I am God. That's a little piece of scripture, but it's so, so heavy. It's so important because here's what I'm gonna tell you. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. The way that you know God, the only way that you're gonna come to know God is if you're still long enough, listen, to know he's God. 
That's what he's saying right there, just in one sentence. That's the only way you're gonna truly, truly know and experience who God is is when you're still enough, still long enough to know that he's God. If you've been here for a little while, you, you've heard me say, you've heard Chad say this, uh, but I wanna challenge you if you're a follower of Jesus that you've gotta find a day Find a day that's better than the other six, and a lot of it will be Sunday for most of us. Find a day where you find ways to plug into God more meaningful in a more intentional way uh, in j- than the other six days. Uh, what we call that is a Sabbath, a Sabbath day where you're not doing chores, you're not doing all, like you're scooting all that stuff aside so that you can be still and know that he's God, okay? Make it intentional. I mean, it's not just coming on ch- to church on Sundays because that's a lot of us are serving here. You gotta be on that to make that time. You go for a walk. You know, if you can make it 20 minutes, make it 20. Go for what? Turn your phone off for an hour, okay? Everybody's like, uh-huh. like turn your phone off just for a little bit on Sunday and just say, no, no, this is God. I'm gonna be so, here's what I'm gonna tell you. Just maybe put it this way, okay? The quieter you become, the louder vo- God's voice comes to you. The quieter you can get, the louder God's voice will be in your life. So busyness is absolutely a way to get knocked off God's path. Here's the second one. If you're taking notes that gets in a way is living someone else's life. You know that a lot of us in here actually wind up living somebody else's life and we don't even know it? One of the, one of the bigger distractions of actually being on God's path is, is knowingly or unknowingly living out someone else's life or plan for you instead of finding God's plan for you. And this happens in a lot of different ways, but it always ends in the same deal, okay? So, so what a lot of us end up doing without even knowing it, I don't know if you ever thought about it, you just kind of end up living your dad's life. You live out like your dad's life. And it's not good or bad. I'm just saying like you just end up doing it or your mom's life. You just, that's what you saw. That's how you live it out. Or you try to live like your brother is living life or your sister's loving life. Or you end up living the way, this is even worse, that other people say this is what you should do. And you live out of that instead of figuring out and running the race that God uniquely, uniquely set out and individually set out for you. And, and so where this happens more often than not in the world today is, is in that uh, social uh, media world where we just keep seeing, you know, this Facebook world where we see these snapshots of families and what they're doing and we see all that stuff going on in their lives. And, and, you know, we know that that's not real life, but here's what we end up doing. We don't end up like looking and trying to one-up them, but you know what we kind of do? And we don't even know it sometimes. We just try to kind of keep up, don't we? We don't even know, like we're just trying to keep up just a little bit. Even though we know that's not real life, uh, we just do it. And before we know it, we get stuck. Listen to me. We get stuck living because of or out of someone else's life. It's crazy. And this is why this is so dangerous, guys. This is why this is so important to understand because then what happens, and if you're trying to figure out whether or not you're doing it this way, here's, here's the litmus test for you. You know what ends up happening for you? You end up getting so exhausted, so frustrated, and feeling so beat up trying to make so-and-so happy, trying to live like they are. And, and what happens is you become so distracted from your purpose when you're living from someone else or trying to be someone you aren't. And let me tell you, that is not God's plan. That is not God's plan for you, okay? Check this out. This is Psalm 139. Here's what it says. It says, this is what we're saying about how God knows us, okay? The writer says, man, for you created my inmost being. My inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Isn't that so great to, to hear about how God really does know you? You. That, that, that you are, listen, every single person in here, You need to just think about this. You are individually and uniquely made and known by God. You are custom built on purpose. You are no mistake. And he doesn't need you to try to be anybody else to do great things in his name. Amen to that? Come on, man. He doesn't need you to live anybody else's life out except for the one he set out specifically for you. How great is that to know and think about? That's how he knows you. Isn't that awesome? That's just awesome. Like when you go to heaven, like here's what's not gonna happen when you go to heaven. Like when you go to heaven, uh, God is not gonna come up to you and say, hey, uh, do you you remember that friend, that friend of yours that was on Facebook? You, You remember, you know, the one who, that could get up and read half the New Testament, uh, work out, and, and then post a perfect angle picture of their family sweat praying for breakfast by 7 a.m. You remember that? And you're like, Judy? Yeah, Judy. Uh, how'd you do living that life? Like, he's not gonna ask that question. Like, it, Judy, we love you, but we're a little frustrated at you, but we don't have to live Judy's life, okay? And if you're Ju- like, sorry, but that's just not what's gonna happen, okay? Here's what he's gonna ask you. He doesn't care about you compared to Judy. Here's what's gonna happen when you get up. You know what he's gonna ask you? He's gonna say, what did you do with my son? What did you do with Jesus? And then he's, gonna, he's not gonna measure your life against anybody else's life. He's not gonna look at your race and say, yeah, but what about Steve's race? What about John's race? What about, what about Sarah's race? He's not gonna do that. He's gonna look at the one that he specifically set out for you and he's gonna say, how'd you do with that? 
because that's what I'm because that's the life I wanted you to have but so here's what I'm gonna say why try and run somebody else's race guys we just don't that's not what we do he's got one ready just for you I think some of you here this morning I, I'm telling you I think you're here because you need you, you need to hear this word today you don't you don't need to live somebody else's life to have purpose you don't need to compare yourselves and keep up with them to find your worth. You aren't here to please anybody except for your heavenly father who made you. And look, he's so crazy about you that he sent his son to live and to die your death so that you could have an eternally purpose-filled life. That's how serious he is about your purpose and finding that in your life. So that's the second thing. Because we, gotta, we gotta not live out of somebody else's life. We gotta just start living our own lives and, and, and going after what? Here's a third one. Here's the third one. I'm excited to talk. I'm gonna run out of time. Losing focus on the little things. Losing focus on the little things. That's a huge distractor of, of being on and staying on God's path for your life. I think uh, when it comes to figuring out God's path and staying on it, here's what happens for a lot of people. Here's what happens, is that we get so focused, don't we, on these bigger things, like what do I do, and, and this job, and like, oh man, like what do we, do we move, or what? You get so focused, and you want God to answer uh, all those big things, and, and all the while over here, not really considering how important following those little things really are in a life lived of faith, okay? And, and just taking care of business, like the Jesus 101 stuff, like, really following every day those little Jesus 101 things that, listen everybody, that everybody can do. I'm not talking about the complicated thing. I'm talking about like looking at the little things and focusing on those little things because here, I'm gonna tell you the secret. Here's a secret. I love letting everybody in on secrets uh, that people have who really see these things happen in their lives. Here's a secret with so many people who are on God's path and staying on it is they know, listen, they know how important those little things are to do right. And when they do those little things, here's what they know. They stack up to a huge, big faith life, don't they? And that's how they get on God's path, by doing all these little things right. And here's the other thing that I wanna tell you. This is the side that is scary and it's happening and I just hate that it's happening. Here it is. Listen, when you start to lose focus on the little things, that's when we get into bigger troubles. I'd, I'd write that. I mean, when I lose focus on the little things, that's when I get into bigger troubles. I'd write that down. I'm telling you, I mean, that's just can't lose focus on the little things. Look, there is, and I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna equate everybody in this room right now. There is not a Jesus follower in this room who has never faced temptation. We always face temptations. We fa face temptation every day. We face it every day to, to give in or to cave to, to not doing what we know God wants us to do or to doing what we know God doesn't want us to do. And here's the thing, for a lot of those, actually for every single one of those things, for little ones and big ones, for every single one of those things, it comes down to the same choice. It's one single choice that we all have, and you know what it is? I'm either gonna follow God or not. Every time. Am I gonna follow God or am I not? And here's what I'm gonna tell you. See, here's the thing. That battle isn't won right in that moment. It is, it is won way before that moment ever shows up in doing the little things and focusing on doing these little things, right? They add up to a huge, huge life of faith, and you'll be ready when that thing comes. Check this out. Here's what it says in Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews says this. He says, since we're surrounded by so many examples of faith, we must what? Get rid of everything that slows us down, especially, especially those temptations, the sin that what? That distracts us. Why? What do we want to do? Because we must run the race that lies ahead of us and never give up. We must, everybody what? Focus on Jesus Come on, we gotta focus on Jesus. We gotta do the little things right. We gotta get rid of the distractions so that we can actually see God's clear path for our life. That is just simple. When, also, uh, when we were traveling this summer, we were actually able to go to Spokane, Washington this summer, my family and I, and it was, uh, it was just a great trip. I was able to marry my brother-in-law, uh, Courtney's brother. It was really fun to be out there, and we all went. It was the first time in the plane for the kids. That went really well. We just had a great time, and so we found time when we were in Spokane to just walk around the city, the beautiful city, and we were having a great time, and we thought, man, the kids are doing so good uh let's let's go get him a toy so we you know according we were walking around the city and she goes oh i found a toy store and so he's just headed towards the toy store and, and we went around the corner and, and we walked into the toy store and uh, right, right away, uh, the smell of incense should have just tipped us off. Uh, when we walked in, it just had that incense smell, you know? And uh, so th this was not a toy store. It was, like a, it was like a novelty, like a Spencer Gifts kind of like adult. It was at times about 100, okay? And uh, this is true. We walked in, okay, this is very true. And we walked in according to we're like, mm, and, and so Henry, my six-year-old, goes, mm, this is wrong, guys. That's what he said. <laughs> I swear. And he went, he went, Mom, Dad, this is dead wrong. And he backpedaled out of the room, turned around, and walked out the door. No lie. 
I swear, it was a true, if I'm lying, I'm dying. It was a true story. He's like, this is dead wrong. And just backpedaled out. So funny. But here's, here's my point. Here's my point. Okay, listen. This is, there's a principle in this, I'm telling you. He was, listen, he was so focused on a toy store. He knew exactly what a toy store needed to look like. And right when he got in there, he knew this wasn't right. And listen to me, he called it what it was. And listen, let us take a lesson from my six-year-old. Like, for real, let us take a lesson. Listen, when you walk into something that's wrong, call it what it is, everybody. Say, it's dead wrong. And get out. Turn around and get out, okay? Or you will smell like incense the rest of the day. Trust me, okay? Like... <laughs> But I was so proud of him. I was like, man, you just, that was a godly principle, son. Like, I love you for that. Dead wrong. And so I told him the other day I was going to tell a story at church. I said, man, I said, Henry, I'm going to tell a story about when you said it was dead wrong. And he goes, ha, ha. Like, I was like, it was just fun. <laughs> he was like, yeah, that was great, dad. Uh, so, man, he's, he's, got, a, he's got a future. Um, so just call it what it is, okay? Just call it what it is. You know why? Here's why. This is, listen to me, everybody. I hope that, I, I really do hope that's sticky. Because I'm looking out and I think some of us are walking way too far into something we know is dead wrong. You hear me? You're walking way too far in. And we're not paying attention to little things and they're gonna add up to a huge, huge bigger trouble than you could ever imagine in your life. And you will not find God's path. I'm just telling you this, okay? I wanna take a lesson here from God and from what, from what Henry's trying to teach us on that too, man. But, but listen, here, you know why this is so important? Listen to me. Do you know, you know what the Bible says who you are? If you're here and you're a Jesus follower, you say, no, I'm a Christian. Do you know what the Bible says you are? The Bible says you're a saint, that you are holy, that you are set apart if you are in Christ. That's who you are, that Jesus is dwelling in you, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. And so when that opportunity to, to, that comes up to, to say, no, I'm, I get to gossip or not, when that opportunity to gossip comes up, or when that opportunity where, where anger is getting a little unhealthy, or when that relationship is getting a little too close, that you can actually say, no, 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 that's not how I live, that's not who I am. I know what I want to do. I know what the temptation is. It's easy to give in, but I'm not going to give in to that. I'm way more interested in God's path being clear in my life. And so I'm not giving in to that. I'm not going to do that. And I'm telling you, that victory comes by keeping your focus on Jesus and doing the little things right. Now, we can all do that. Come on, can we help each other do that? Just the little things right. Can we do that together, everybody? Man, do we not want to get on that path? Come on, that's an easy thing. We can do these little things right, okay? So those are the distractors, all right? Let's, let's, now, how do we get on the path? What do we do to get on the path? How do I find God's plan? Uh, I'm gonna give you two things today to look at and focus on to get us into a better environment uh, to be on God's path and live out God's plans and promises for your life. And I'm gonna use this scripture to sort of set the table for us. This is in 2 Corinthians 7. Here's what he says. I love this because we're coming in the fall. You know, new semester, like new, new, I just feel this newness like, for me and for hopefully you feel it too with coming in the fall. Here's what he says. Let's make a clean break then. Let's just make a clean break. Come on, let's start today. Make a clean break with everything that what defiles or distracts us, both within and what he's saying, like you got stuff inside that you can absolutely control and, and that you can let God do. So without, and he also says, and without, even things you don't think you control. Man, I'm telling you, God's more in charge than you think. Let's make our entire lives fit in holy temples for the worship of God. You need to focus on Jesus, get rid of the distractions, and we're gonna actually move on this and get our life right so that we can hear God better every day. Two things we do. Here's the first thing that I'm going to do every single day. I'm going to do this by cultivating God's presence in my life. Every day, I'm going to cultivate God's presence. What does that mean? Well, we have to, I don't know if you know this, we have to fight to stay in God's presence. Did you know that? Like, it's a fight. Like, it's a, it's a real fight. And don't mistake it, it's a fight. Okay, so, like, so many people wonder, like, if you wonder, like, man, why is it so hard uh, to read the Bible? Why is it so hard to get up early and pray? Why is it so hard to pray with my spouse or my family? Guys, because it's a fight. Like, you're not just fighting sleep. It's a spiritual battle. You know that, right? I mean, it's a fight. It, that's why it's real. The fight is real. It's a real battle. I just wanted, so I just want to encourage you here a little bit this morning. I want to encourage you because, gang, this world is just, it is constantly trying to influence you the other way you know that right like the world is not trying to influence you towards God the world is trying to influence away from God and and don't think that you're just automatically in the presence of God every day that's not how it works like you're not just automatically in his presence now what is true is that God is present always but I'm telling you it's a different story when it comes to you putting yourself in a position to actually place yourself in his presence does that make sense it's a fight it's a battle every single don't just assume you're in his presence that's just not how it works so, so what do we do to cultivate God's presence every day well first thing you gotta do is you gotta find time every day to be in God's word 
That's like, again, 101 stuff, like being God's word every day. If you don't have 15, 20 minutes, then don't go one day without just one scripture to chew on, just one verse to chew on. Get the Bible app, just open your Bible, like whatever it takes to get one scripture uh, just to chew on every day. Don't let a day go by. And fight, listen, here's another one, fight to give God the first part of your day every day. Like, just fight to give him that first part of your day right when you wake up, whenever that is, okay? And I'm not saying give him an hour or something like that. I'm just saying before your feet hit the floor, go, God, this is your day. I am yours today. That's it. Like, just give him 15 seconds just right in the front of every day. Fight for that. That's how you cultivate his presence. Like, man, just just show me your plans today, God. I'm yours today. This day is yours. Uh, We'll cultivate his presence by doing that. We we cultivate his presence by applying, applying what we what we hear hear, here. What we what we what we learn and write down here. Okay, that's why those binders for me, I think, just hold a bigger vision for what I'm hoping can happen and what I know happens with a lot of you already, where man, we just take what we get here and not just let it die on Sunday, where we just move on throughout the week. Say, no, no, I'm learning this today. It's Monday, I'm learning it. Tuesday, I'm learning as I go through that. So uh, just, you know, we wanna make that easier, more intentional for you to do that, uh, to elevate the vision of, of keeping what you're learning here just go beyond Sunday, not just on Sunday. So that's how we cultivate his presence every day too. Uh, don't let what you learn here just die on Sunday. Uh, we cultivate it by entering into worship. Worship, I'm telling you right now, if you write anything in there to cultivate your presence, I'm telling you, worship, I'm becoming more and more convinced of this, is one of the most important things to cultivate uh, your relationship and God's presence in your life, okay? I, I just, here's what I gotta tell you. God, God is just attracted to worship. Like, you don't have to read the Bible that much to know he is just, a, like, he is just, he just, something happens. He's like big time attracted to it, okay? Uh, and I'm just saying one of the things that I've learned even in my time away in the summer that I've had, and I'm even more convinced of this in my time with him, is that I just really believe there is a key, there is just a key to your worship and his presence in your life. I just absolutely believe that there is a connection, a direct connection between how you worship and, and the presence that you feel uh, I- I- of him in your life. I just think there's a huge connection to it. I'm tripling down on that. I just believe it. Uh, so here's the thing. If you're here and you're trying to find God, worship. He'll find you. Just work, enter into worship, trust me, and he'll find you. Here's what James 4 says. It says, man, draw near to God. Draw near to God. And what's gonna happen? He is gonna draw near to you. And so when you come here on Sundays, man, don't just, don't just come in. Come in expecting him to meet you in worship. Be like, God, I know you're gonna meet me in here. I don't, whatever happened this week, you're gonna meet me here today in worship. And he will show up. I believe he will respond to you when you worship. When you come to worship God, he's gonna meet you, man. And find ways, here's the other way that we do. You gotta find ways to worship throughout the week. Not just on Sunday. This is a unique opportunity we have with each other. Find ways to do it, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes a day, like when you go on a walk or when you go to lunch or find some worship music just to listen to. And that's what I do. Uh, when I go for a run, I put on uh, a worship list and I just roll, man. Like I just roll with worship, man. And, uh, and sometimes I forget I'm running on Taze Valley Road and you've seen me. Like I'm just like, Jesus. Like, you know, I'm just like running like, and, and like some of you are like, how does he know that's me? I'm not waving, I'm waving at Jesus. Like, I'm just like, whoa. Um, Yeah, that's what I do. Um, Hey, listen, you know, I I, I found this out yesterday. (laughs) If if I could do that for the Mountaineer football team, I better be able to do that for my God. Come on, everybody. Like, I should be able to be a little enthusiastic for the God who saved me and loves me, right? I love the Mountaineers. And I was there yesterday going, come on, Mountaineers. Like, I was like that. But last time I looked, man, Mountaineers ain't saved me from nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, And looking from yesterday, they got bigger fish to fry than myself and my plans, okay? Like, they got to worry about themselves. I love them, but they didn't save me from nothing, okay? Like, I'm just saying. So we cultivate God's presence. Come on, everybody, you listening? We cultivate it every single day. And when you feel that tug, which you will, when you feel that tug, when when that thought comes up of just sleeping or, I don't feel like reading today or, man, I don't know about worshiping, call it what it is. It's the enemy just trying to keep you away and say, nope, not today. I'm getting up. I'm, I'm gonna give God my day. I'm waking up. I'm opening up that Bible. I'm gonna put on the armor of God today because I need it and I'm ready to fight. Like, mm, like just, just stick it to the enemy, right? Like right in the midsection of it, just man. And uh, like you wanna know, and I'm just telling you, stick it to the devil, get in God's presence, okay? That's what we remember, all right? I don't know what that is, but do it, okay? Um, punch him right in the gut, you know what I mean? Like wake up, get up, say no, this is I'm gonna give him my day. Uh, here's a second one. Do I have time? Here's this, oh boy. Here's how we get involved. I missed you guys. It's just, you wanna go another 30 minutes? Let's do it. No, okay. Get involved in the church. I got five more points, then we're done. Just kidding. Okay, get involved in the church. Get involved in the church. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Here's what I'm gonna say. For a lot of us, 
I would say most of us, me included, me included, by the way, I uh, wasn't always a pastor. I, I just was an attender at one point in time at River Ridge Church. For a lot of us here, who got on the path and found their purpose. It started, for so many of us in here, with an attitude of just saying yes to what God is already doing in their church. That's where it starts. That's where they find their path. That's, that's what happens, just getting in the flow of what God is already doing right here. And it doesn't, listen to me, I'm telling you, I'm serious about this. It does not have to be this church. If you're, if you're finding some hard, like if you're finding it difficult to get, then you've got to find a church that you love and, and then go all in. I, I just happen to love this church, uh, so I think this church is great to get go all in with. But man, you've got to find a church that you can love. And, and there's not a perfect church. Uh, if you're trying to find a perfect church, just wait till you get to heaven because they don't exist here, okay? But you gotta find and say, okay, flaws and all, I love this place, I'm going all, you gotta go in. You gotta go all in because here's why, don't miss this. Don't miss this, okay? A lot of people will spend most of their time looking for what they should do instead of seeing and being a part of what God's already doing. You hear me? Like you will just spend all your life, what am I supposed to do? And you'll just miss what God's already doing here. He's doing awesome things here. I mean, it's amazing what he is doing here just in this community church of people and getting the flow of what he's already doing, okay? Get involved, go all in, okay? Do, do next steps. If you're here and you haven't done next steps, man, go to next steps. It just so happens that we're starting next steps next week. And it'll take you through three weeks just at the 11 o'clock service, at this service. It'll take you through three weeks of, of what we're all about, what God's doing here. How do you get plugged in? It's the best way to get connected here by doing next steps, okay? Uh, come to the night of worship when we have nights of worship. Don't sit out our nights of worship. Come here, man, worship with us. Those nights of worship, I'm telling you, that's where I feel God's presence the most in my life. Like when we do night, come to the night of worship, right? Join, participate when we do the week of prayer. When we do our week of prayer, participate. Be a part of that week of prayer with us because that's a part of a bigger thing that we think God wants for this community. Get baptized. If you're here and you haven't been water baptized, what are you waiting on? That's the first step of obedience and we're baptizing folks in October. So get baptized, okay? If you haven't done that, be consistent in coming here. All right, just go all in. Don't miss worship. Serve, serve here. I mean, we, we, God is doing so many things with our kids and our students and our adults. Find a place to get plugged in and serve here. Get in a group. Get in a group. This is the last Sunday to sign up to, uh, to, for, for our fall groups, okay? And we're not gonna do it again until the spring semester. So sign up for a group today. Sign up today. Uh, get in an environment with people who are going after Jesus together and just like, man, I, I don't know how to do this on my own. And that's what you do. You get in a circle and eat good food, hopefully, and talk about God a little bit once a week. It's awesome. Uh, and when you sign up today, it just commits you to eight weeks. Eight weeks, and then you decide whether or not you wanna keep going. Sign up for a group. Give us a, here's what I wanna say. Give us a year. Give us a year and just go all in. Say yes and just see what God does. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you're going to look back if you just keep saying yes to what God's doing here. You're going to say, man, I really found some purpose and meaning in my life. God really grew me, and I clearly understand his path more. I just believe it. Just give us a year and say yes to him. And it just so happens that all those things I just mentioned, we're doing every single one of those this semester. Every single one of them we're doing this semester. So get in. Get in with what we're doing, okay? Because he knows. God knows the plans that he has for your life. Isn't that awesome to know? That's the answer to the question this morning. He has a plan for you, and he is speaking to them, them to you right now. Right now, he's speaking them to you. So don't wonder if there's something bigger out there. There is. Now it's just, okay, how do I put myself in a better position to receive, receive the plans that he has for my life? And maybe it's just starting by looking at this list saying, all right, let's look at these distractors. Let's have an honesty about these distractions. I think it starts there. I think so many of us live in somebody else's life. I don't think we know we're doing that, but I'm telling you guys, just think about it. Think about doing these little things right. Just look at that first and maybe look at the few things that we, that we could do together. And, and maybe just start this way. Just You could start this today, but maybe tomorrow when we give God the first part of our day, maybe before our feet hit the ground every single day, we can just say, God, show me, show me the plan for my life. Like, show me the plans you have for my life, God. Why can't we just say that every day? And, and you know, not God, do, what are they? Like, not God, uh, hey, is it this job or that job? Not God, you know, like, show me uh, anything, but just like, show me the plans you have for my life. Just every day, just say that. Like, I know you got them, God. I know you're trying to speak them into my life. And in the meantime, I'm gonna keep acting. I'm gonna do the little things right. I'm gonna live this life of faith as best I can. I'm gonna get as close as I can to Jesus. But in the meantime, God, just show me your plans for my life. Can we do that? What do you think, everybody? All right, let's pray and ask God to help us then. God, thank you that you do have plans for our life. You say you have plans to prosper us, to benefit us, to, to, to see great things happening, that we can actually do some things in your name that you uniquely and individually put in our hearts and in our lives when we accepted uh, Jesus and what he did for us. That we don't uh, just accept Jesus for eternity, which we have, but we have uh, a life to live here with purpose and meaning, and you give that to us. For those of us here, God, 
who have found that and keep staying on his path. And, and we get to see the benefit of that here in this church, God. I think that's why we see you doing so many great things because people keep saying yes and staying on that path. Thank you for them. And I pray that you just give them uh, some encouragement today to, to stay on that path. And for those of us here who are, are wondering, who ask that question, how do I do it? I, God, I pray you find, give them some answers today. Like, speak to them. Holy Spirit, do something right now that they can say, no, no, there it is. That's why. That's why I'm missing it. Or, no, that's, that's where it is. God, help them right now in this moment. And for those folks out there who are just, they have their doubts, they have their, their skepticisms about Christianity, I just pray they stick in with this series, God, over the next five weeks, that they can just be open to what you have to say. I, I, just, I just pray a blessing over this series right now because I think you're really gonna move in some people's lives and change some people over the course of this series. So I pray they stay in uh, with us over the next five weeks. We love you and we thank you and we just give you this day. In Jesus' name, show us the plans. Amen, amen. Hey, it's been a great Sunday, everybody. Don't forget a few things, all right? Bag hunger grab those bags binders uh, get those binders we'll have more for you next week uh, group sign up sign up for a group and next week we are going to talk about this aren't all religions just the same we're going to talk about the uniqueness of Christianity we'll see you next Sunday